Hey guys, I'm Denny Chapman. Thanks for joining us for the new and improved version of The Gun Show. We are so excited for this new format and we think you're going to love it too. Our goal here is to bring you a variety of exciting gun content, guests, features, and plenty more. Enough of me talking about it. Let's dive right into one of my favorite new segments. Now, I'm a history buff and I can't get enough of this stuff. That's why I'm fired up to bring you the weapons that shaped our world. In October 1941, a 21-day battle erupts in the Soviet town of Bryansk. Soviet forces are encircled by the German Second Army, but the Red Army holds its ground, preventing the Germans from overtaking Moscow. That battle would help change the war. At a nearby military hospital, a Soviet soldier recovers from a significant shoulder wound suffered in the three-week battle. In the adjacent bed, a fellow soldier wonders aloud, Why do our comrades only have one rifle for every two or three men when the Germans have automatic weapons? That question would change the future of warfare and lead to one of the weapons that shaped our world. Mikhail Kalashnikov had already been a Soviet weapons designer at the start of the war. In 1947, six years after that prophetic question from his wounded comrade, Kalashnikov's vision would be complete. The result? The most prolific firearm in the history of combat. The most produced firearm ever. The Aftermat Kalashnikova, or Automatic Kalashnikov, the AK-47. Used in dozens of countries around the world, the design and function of the AK-47 lends itself to the adverse conditions of combat. Simple in its design, the AK-47 was made to be easy to operate, rugged, dependable, and fast to produce. Built around a 7.62 by 39 millimeter cartridge, with a muzzle velocity of around 2300 feet per second, the AK-47 was designed for both semi and full auto use capable of firing 600 rounds per minute. With its long stroke gas piston operating system, the AK-47 is built to work under harsh conditions. It is simple to field strip and maintain. Since the time Kalashnikov laid awake, pondering a way to equalize the war, over 100 million AK-47s have been produced, half of which were made outside of Russia. The AK-47 remains the preferred rifle of many armies around the world, including one nation that inherited stashes of the weapon upon the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Ukraine. The AK-47, a weapon that shaped our world. This is Charlie Kirk, and you're watching The Gun Show. We received a lot of messages asking us to cover 2A News. You spoke and we listened. Here's the fastest two minutes of 2A News Around. The calls for constitutional carry are growing in America as four more states passed constitutional carry into law this past legislative session, bringing the total number of states to 25. Florida is one state that has not passed it, even though Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has been a very vocal supporter of the policy. Recently, Governor DeSantis announced that he is calling on the Florida legislature to reconvene in Tallahassee April 19th for a special session with one of his priorities being constitutional carry. On April 1st, the coalition of 23 state attorney generals submitted an amicus brief to the U.S. Supreme Court requesting they overturn California's ban on magazines with a capacity greater than 10 rounds. The brief argued California California's magazine ban is unconstitutional because it's a categorical ban on firearms used by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. As of this recording, the status of this case has not been updated, but we will continue to watch it closely. On April 11th, in a special ceremony at the White House Rose Garden, President Joe Biden announced a ban on unserialized homemade firearms using 80% lower receiver kits or 3D printers, also known as ghost guns. Currently, it's legal for American citizens to build unserialized firearms firearms using independently purchased hardware or commercially sold kits. These new regulations will define unfinished lower receivers as firearms that require a serial number and background check, since will take effect 120 days after they are officially published in the Federal Register. In addition to the ban on ghost guns, also included in the President's new regulations, are an expansion of the ATF's collection of sales records from out-of-business firearms dealers, also known as Federal Firearms Licensees, or FFLs. 
Currently, once an FFL goes out of business, they are required to turn in their sales records, including the background check forms of gun owners from the last 20 years of sales. This new regulation will require FFLs to keep and turn in these records for the entire time that they are open. At Big Daddy Unlimited, we are revolutionizing the online gun buying process. And Big Daddy Unlimited has the largest selection of in-stock gear, guns, and ammo. Make no mistake. Big Daddy Unlimited, join the revolution. Now we kick things off with Charlie Kirk, the founder of Turning Point USA, who recently spent the day visiting us here at the BDU headquarters. And in fact, he did his entire daily radio broadcast from our studio podcast room. He was kind enough to sit down and share his perspective with the gun show. Tell me about TPUSA, how did it begin? Uh, started it in June of 2012. Um, I felt our country was going in the wrong direction. That feeling has not changed, unfortunately. Uh, I had no money, no connections, no idea what I was doing. And only in America could an 18-year-old with none of those things still be able to succeed if you just have drive and hustle and kind of be willing to take a risk. And so here we are 10 years later. It'll be 10 years in June. Uh, thousands of campuses, tens of thousands of donors, over 65,000 donors that give us money every single year. Um, we raise you know, a good amount of money every year, but more importantly is kind of how we're able to move the dial. Millions of people, we're, we reach online every single day. Our campus impact is significant, so we're, we're on the front lines of taking back this country. How do you balance your personal life with uh, Turning Point so, USA? Um, it's interesting, I was getting burned out like six or seven months ago, and a pastor friend of mine, David Engelhart from, uh, from New York, said, hey, you know, are, you, are you honoring the Sabbath? I was like, oh, I don't have time for that. And so I just shut down on Friday night now. I turn off my phone completely. I'm unreachable. Um, so in a couple hours, I'm just going straight off the grid. I think Christians need to take the Sabbath a lot more seriously. I tell people that are stressed and anxious and depressed, I say, are you honoring the Sabbath? I mean really doing it. No phone, no TV, reading, sleeping in, and resting. It's been, a, it's been a great blessing for me and allows me to go crazy the other six days of the so, week. So I'm a gun guy. Good. As you, as you probably, I, as you probably could have guessed. I love guns, right? so good. <laughs> Let's talk guns. Let's talk about the Second Amendment and guns just a little bit. Uh, Charlie Kirk's firearms experience. Um, I own a lot of guns. I won't tell you how many because that's not proper in public it's communication. No, but nobody's business. No much, bu nobody's business how, many, how much money you have or how many guns you have. But plenty. Um, yeah, I, didn't really, I wasn't really raised in a gun home. My parents were never really against it. It was just a suburban Chicago home. A friend of mine took me pheasant hunting, who's actually one of my board members now, really good friend of mine. And I loved it. I was actually a little skittish around guns, to be honest, the first time. Just kind of scared kind of what it could do, right? Um, I just snapped out of that pretty quickly. But uh, yeah, I have a considerable um, amount of experience for just kind of a, a pedestrian. I'm not an expert, right? I get the nomenclature screwed up here and there. I get some of the vocabulary mixed up. So I, I leave that to you guys. But I know a lot more than these ridiculous gun grabbers on television for sure. But more importantly than that, I'm a huge defender of the moral, philosophical, and political reasons why we should have the Second Amendment. That, I'm an expert in. That leads me to my second question. What does the Second Amendment mean to you? No, without the Second Amendment, there's no First Amendment. It's, you can't have freedom if you can't protect it, right? So I think it's on Big Daddy Unlimited's website, which is a line that I use. You know, without the ability to protect yourself, your subject's not citizen. That's a big, the, the idea of citizen versus subject is a really important topic we can dive into. Um, and you know you can see what's happening when any tyrant wants to exploit its citizens if the people do not have the ability to push back materially, meaning with some sort of technology that can be an even, you know, let's say a status evener such as you know a firearm or whatever, then you're really just being held hostage in your own nation. The Second Amendment was not built for hunting. It's fun. I like hunting. Uh, it's not even built for self-protection. It was to be able to defend the liberty of people against a tyrannical government. Charlie Kirk certainly is an impressive young man. Another impressive thing is that we recently had the opportunity to go to the range with the guys from Pilgrim Ammo to see if their claims about the torch round lived up to all its hype. All I have to say is, well, check this out and decide for yourself. We're at the range today with Jason and James from Pilgrim Ammo. And James, I've got your Pilgrim Torch Ammo here. 
we really want to put it to the test, but tell me what this was designed for and what can we expect today? This is a, uh, it's a home defense round, okay, or it's a, it's a law enforcement round as well, but it's, it's basically, in my opinion, one of the best defensive rounds there is. It's super lightweight, moves extremely quickly, uh, and hits with a lot of kinetic energy, about 450 foot-pounds, that's our 950 foot-pounds of kinetic energy that adds to it. And what we say is that it has zero over penetration to date. And what kind of velocity are we looking for out of this nine millimeter? 2,000 feet per second or greater. We're gonna put it to the test. We got the chronograph, we got the gel, we got some other stuff that we're gonna shoot as well. Yep. So let's do it. 2201. So hot. Cool. First off, I made an observation. I didn't have nearly as much recoil as I thought I would first. But secondly, let's talk about the, the cool stuff right here. <laughs> what just happened? What am I looking at? Okay, well, you gotta bear in mind that this is a synthetic gel block. Okay, it's not the animal gelatin gel blocks that we typically make. Okay, it gives you a much more realistic effect. Okay, but synthetic, as soon as it hits that soft target, hydraulic pressure builds up in the nose of that projectile. You can see how deep that, that is milled down to. It goes all the way down to the base plate. Okay, so what happens is hydraulic pressure builds up of that and basically as it enters a soft target, it explodes in an unconventional pattern. So what you can see in here is little uh, little copper chips. Right. Okay, you've got about a four, four and a half to five inch uh, starburst pattern. Now then you've traveled all the way I mean, through to here. I have to cut you off. That looks devastating right there. I mean, that looks like it's over. That, that's what we're aiming at. Okay, okay. We, we want one and done. <laughs> Okay, we want to end the threat with one shot. Yeah, we're quite proud of it. That's it for episode one of the new and improved version of The Gun Show. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit us up on Instagram at The Gun Show USA. And of course, you can always find us on excluded.com. Be sure to join us next week. Until then, I'm Denny Chapman. Thanks for watching.